Well, Donald Trump has appealed the Colorado Supreme Court's landmark decision barring him from the state's primary ballot. The former president is now asking the nation's highest court to take up the case and reverse the ruling that found him ineligible for the presidency. In their request to the Supreme Court, attorneys for Trump argued only Congress can consider and decide on whether someone is eligible to serve as president. They also said even if the Colorado Supreme Court could rule on this issue, they say it misapplied the law. And last month, this court found that Trump cannot hold public office under the Constitution's so-called insurrection clause. Less than two weeks later, Maine's Secretary of State also barred Trump from the state's primary ballot under the same provision. Trump is also appealing that decision. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins us now. Scott, remind us why Colorado barred Trump from the ballot. Yeah, Colorado and Maine both sent a jolt through the legal challenges and through the campaign for Donald Trump. They both found that he should be removed from the ballot for violating what is Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which prohibits from running from office anybody who's engaged or supported insurrection. And the Colorado Supreme Court found, and the lower court in Colorado also found, that Trump violated that clause by empowering, or inspiring, giving rise to the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. This really is such a a distinctive moment and a distinctive argument because both sides of this Colorado ballot dispute want this thing in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. They both want the high court to weigh in. The litigants, the challengers trying to get Trump off the primary ballot and later off the general election ballot want the Supreme Court to make perhaps a more sweeping, broad ruling to help their challenges in other states. Donald Trump obviously wants this thing knocked down and swatted away so that other states don't follow suit. So we're already in unprecedented territory here, but now we have this singular moment where both sides want the Supreme Court to weigh in. And Scott, I want to ask you about uh, the January 6th case underway in Washington. Uh, there was a filing in D.C. federal court just this morning from Donald Trump's defense team asking Judge Tanya Chutkin for sanctions against Special Prosecutor Jack Smith. On what basis are they asking for those sanctions and how likely, from your point of view, you've covered every twist, every twist and turn of the January 6 trials, uh, how likely is it that th that request will be granted? Yeah, they're asking the judge in this case, the judge overseeing Trump's 2020 election conspiracy case, to sanction, if not hold in contempt, the special counsel who's prosecuting the case. Their challenge is not unexpected, but perhaps this is more forceful than we anticipated. Here's what happened. Trump has appealed this case, tried to get the indictment dismissed, arguing he enjoys presidential immunity, that a president can't be criminally charged for something he did and considered an official act. That argument's in front of the appeals court. They have arguments set for Tuesday. And while that argument's at the appeals court, it's supposed to pause all proceedings in the criminal case. But Jack Smith has still been filing motions. In fact, he filed a rather striking motion late in December, presenting the possible exhibits at trial and indicating he may even call members of Congress as witnesses at the Trump trial. Trump's lawyers argue that Jack Smith has violated the rules and a court order by just filing those papers and that he should be sanctioned. And to be clear, Errol, that doesn't mean the judge is opening up those filings, reading through them, reviewing them and making decisions, but... They still think Jack Smith violated the orders. All right, Scott McFarlane with that update for us from Washington. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Scott.